Cool. I'm feeling extremely self-conscious right now because my slides have absolutely no pictures uh, because I was making them on my way to an in-person LARP, an actual in-person LARP, so I was too busy and excited to create pictures for an online LARP talk. Um, right. Um, but I, in the past year and a half, I did organize quite a few online LARPs, so I kind of know a bit of the upsides and the downsides of it. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to share them with you. Uh, there will be some more talks at Knutpunkt, including one titled um, Online LARPs Don't Have to Suck. Uh, <laughs> so this is more or less what I'm trying to convey in this talk as well, but I'm very curious about that one uh, too. Uh, right, um, so to make up for the lack of pictures, I'll at least try to keep it interactive. Uh, so um, Alessandra already kind of primed you for this exercise. Imagine the best scene ever you've had at a LARP. And now raise your hand if that scene involved exactly one, of, uh, one person, only you, if it was purely in your head. Okay, finish closet, great. Uh, if there was one other person, um, two, exactly two people involved in the scene. Okay, put your hands down, three people. Four people. Five people, six people, seven or more people. Okay, so maybe what I was about to say is like completely <laughs> wrong. Uh, <laughs> Right. Okay, so maybe to clarify, for these people who raised their hands for seven or more people, was it an online LARP? No. <sighs> Good. Um, <laughs> because what I wanted to say is conference calls are torture. Um, <laughs> right, so... Um, for quite a few of us who, uh, whose jobs have moved to like working from home, remote work, um, the main struggle uh, were the meetings. So you would spend hours and hours in online meetings discussing with people. And then, you know, you clock out and um, you're kind of hoping that, oh, now I will get back to my favorite hobby, something which helps me wind down after work. Um, but all your LARPs have gone online and they felt so much like work. Um, and initially, it wasn't the fault of the designers at all or the players. It was because the technology wasn't quite there yet to enable us anything else but a conference call, essentially. So the moment COVID hit, um, the bunch of designers who wanted to organize for, for uh, or organize online LARPs were basically stuck with conference calls as pretty much the only medium. Um, and there were some workarounds where you would create a few different hangout rooms and share links with people and tell them uh, you can go, you can switch between the rooms. It was very clunky. And there was Discord, who was completely incomprehensible as a tool initially. Now, two years on, everyone is super proficient with Discord. Um, and it, na uh, it allowed um, people to like switch between channels, um, but only for voice chats. And then the moment Discord introduced um, a vo voice ch uh, vid video chats, uh, where like, it was like a major breakthrough and everyone started designing for Discord. Discord. Um, so the first LARP that I designed for Discord with the intention of, okay, this will finally work like a regular LARP, you will get to switch around various channels and talk to people kind of more like you would in a real LARP, find an excuse to, oh, let's go get a drink and then end up in a closet uh, having our or Monday with someone you shouldn't and so on. Um, but um, another thing I learned is that the players will inflict a 
conference calls on themselves because once uh, they are in a group, it suddenly becomes way more inconvenient to say, oh, I'm going to grab mm, a drink in this other Discord channel. I, I, you're just stuck in a group scene, which sometimes even gets larger, and nobody wants to make an excuse to go and chat with someone else in another channel uh, because it's somehow against the rules of online interaction. Uh, so what I learned is that you need to force them to split into smaller groups. Uh, so some ways of um, th that I came up with, uh, probably not like as the only person in the world who have come up with them, um, basically a more rigid scene structure. So in Together Forever, which is an online LARP inspired by uh, Black Mirror about uh, online dating where an algorithm finds your forever match for you. Um, the scene, scene structure is very rigid and at all times I tell people who to talk with and where to go and uh, I, the lab design ensures that it's like two people talking mostly, sometimes three people, uh, and the group scenes, which are six people, are very short and kind of happen already after people have gotten into the groove of LARPing because they managed to interact with one or two other people uh, rather than sit in a huge conference call. Um, and yeah, if you don't have this re rigid st scene structure, another thing which can work is just to give people reasons to interact mostly one-on-one. -on -one. Um, in um, uh, Zoe's Christmas task force for personal betterment, everyone was assigned a support body with whom they were supposed to like practice yoga or bake cookies and also share uh, what what burdened them. And another tool is spatial chats like um, Gather Town or Spatial IO, um, which um, have pros and cons. Um, they look, uh, they sometimes feel a bit less immersive, but I've seen people sharing their um, wedding photos, which were essentially screenshots of Gather Town. And it was like, oh, it was such an immersive moment. And then <laughs> they share like something which looks like a Zelda on a SNES. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, it apparently can work. But let me now talk briefly about the opportunities um, because I don't want online LARPs to only be a replacement. Um, they have a lot to offer, I think. Um, and I wouldn't want to be designing online LARPs if, uh, they, if they were just always inferior to in-person LARPs. Uh, so what I wanted to share is the, the, like the main discovery for me is that the fact that the communication is asynchronous um, can offer some advantages over in-person LARPs. So for example, you can get very deep for me without getting in the way of immersion and without kind of annoying the players. So um, inner monologues, which usually kind of put you in the spotlight in a weird way while everyone else has to shut up, stop what they are doing and listen to you talking about your feelings, work actually very well in an online LARP where there is a separate text channel called the Dear Diary, uh, where people can just write um, their inner monologues and then read other people's monologues at their leisure whenever, uh, if they want to and not read them if they don't want to. So if there is to be like one main takeaway from this talk for you, if, you if you're designing an online LARP, just add a dear, dear Diary channel, it will probably work. Uh, now I'm by default, I'm adding this channel to all LARPs. Voice in ear also can work quite well with um, one player, uh, like a player not in the scene, sending text messages to a player in the scene and kind of controlling them. It's also a bit less annoying than having a GM hovering uh, over, like, and actually doing the voice in the ear. Facebook timelines, like a lot of our life is on Facebook. It's usually hard to represent it in an in-person LARP. So giving people this mode of expression is, is good. I think I'm running out of time. Uh, so I also just say um, it can be pervasive. Uh, it, uh, I ran a LARP which lasted for a week just because people could play it at their like, own time. Um, and 
can be cross media. And I also just show these two things uh, that you can read as I step off the stage because I have two seconds. Thank you. <laughs>